In other news, the public hearing sessions of the Senate Special Select Committee on the Portico Definitive Agreement finally resumed today. The highlight was the appearance as second witness of David Gegg, the developer behind the Port of Magical Belize project that required the signing of the definitive agreement. He appeared with attorney Andrew Bennett at his side. Gegg reported to the committee that he had a change of heart about appearing despite Senator Janelle Chanona chairing the committee. He said it is high time the facts be shared with the Belizean people and affirmed he was attending the committee with clean hands. Gag narrated that the plan for Port Magica was developed with consultants in Miami. The communication with government, he says, started in June 2017. He added there were subsequent meetings, including with then Prime Minister Dean Barrow, who instructed that an MOU be prepared. The meeting was arranged by Senator Stephen Duncan. Thereafter, Gag shared he secured endorsements for the project from cruise executives and then made links with Boscalis, which bought into the project with an agreement being signed in May 2019. Gag noted that in December 2019, he and Boscalis reps met with Prime Minister Dean Barrow. Fast forward to 2020, the year of the general elections, Gag says the environmental clearance process was proceeding smoothly and they had no reason to believe it would would be denied. They had submitted their ESIA, that is Environmental and Social Impact Assessment in March of 2020. They were subsequently called to make supplemental information and he attended four meetings of the National Environmental Appraisal Committee, NIAC. They finally learned the project had been approved in August, that is on August 28, 2020. However, there were soon some hurdles. While the environmental clearance for the project was ongoing, they retained Morales per feet LLP to draft the definitive agreement. Draft definitive agreement was forwarded on June 1st, 2021 to Ministers Panton, per feet and Contreras. NIAC meeting of August 28th had approved our environmental clearance. I could not believe it. I was over the moon. Please keep in mind that our draft definitive agreement had already been in circulation since June 1st to Ministers Panton and Perifit, as well as to Minister Contreras. My elation was short-lived a few days later when there was a suggestion that there may not have been a quorum at the meeting of August 28th. In early September of 2020, and wanting to ensure that the government representatives understood the financial commitment which Poscalis had provided. Freshly dated letters to P.M. Barrow with copies to Tracy Panton and Erwin Contreras were delivered to the offices of those persons at their Belmopan locations. I personally delivered those letters. The letters, two different letters, once again contained the equity commitment by Poscalis and the references from their European bankers. Those letters, were, those letters were dated September 2nd, 2020, and I delivered them on or about September 4th in Belmopan. Having not heard from NIAC as regard the approval, nor from Minister Panton or anyone else in the progress of the definitive agreement, I reached out to Minister Contreras for some guidance on how to proceed. He indicated that he needed to review the situation before he could commit to the DA as he foresaw the environmental clearance being an issue. I immediately pointed out to him that the definitive agreement for Harvest Key had been signed prior to their receiving environmental clearance. Mr. Con Minister Contreras said that he would seek advice and get back to me. We met again about a week later where he indicated that he had been advised I assumed at that time by the AG's office that before he could sign the DA, we would need to insert certain conditions precedent, including that the agreement would not take effect until Portico had obtained environmental clearance. I consulted with Mr. Morales, who advised that this was doable, and he proceeded to amend the agreement. He sent it to me 
and I in turn shared it with Minister Contreras. Several days later, I was told that the signing of the definitive agreement would be on October 1st, 2020 in, Bilma, in Belmopan. I attended that meeting and the document was signed. Gag told the committee that as regards his knowledge of Minister Erwin Contreras being able to sign the definitive agreement, he did not know of any protocols or procedures the government may have had, but he knew that Contreras was an elected representative and the substantive minister. He stated, quote, he was an agent of the state, end quote. Gag then turned to what transpired in relation to environmental clearance under the new government of the People's United Party. In January of 2021, with the Brisenu administration seated in Belmapan, representatives from Moscales once again visited Belize and once again freshly dated equity commitment letters were delivered to Prime Minister Brisenu. That was January 11th, and copies of those letters were hand-delivered to Ministers Habet and Mala, with whom we also met. A fourth NIAC meeting was convened for February 2nd, 2021, and after providing an addendum to our supplemental data, as requested by the DOE, several weeks later, I was told that environmental clearance had been granted, but in a phased approach. Having secured that environmental compliance plan, and having paid annually our environmental monitoring fees, totaling $450,000 to the government of Belize as recently as April of last month, there can be no doubt today that our definitive agreement is valid, is binding, and is enforceable. Since launching the Magical Belize Port Initiative over seven years ago, Portico and its partners have expended close to 15 million euros in development capital and we continue to incur costs on works being carried out as we speak. Today, there are teams of scientists and their support crews at our site carrying out ground truthing exercises after using LIDAR, drones and artificial intelligence to make initial determinations of mangrove cover. Gag remarked he does not feel the process was rushed. He affirmed if it appeared that way it would be because he knew government would change and that would come with another delay. Notably, Gag was also asked if he received any request for campaign financing to rush through the process. Around the middle of September, after the August 28th NIAC meeting, which supposedly approved our environmental clearance. I received a message and I, in, I interpreted that message as saying to me that the environmental documentation approved on August 28th would not be concluded in the absence of a significant campaign contribution. That was mid-September of 2020? Correct. By whom? I can't say. What was the amount asked for? Seven figures. Can you state the number, the figure? Seven figures. And that I would anticipate was members of the then government, the then UDP government. Well, they were the only ones in a position to conclude the ECP. L let me say, you know, or also, after that, there was another meeting of the NIAC called on October 15th. My analysis? By then, they knew nothing was in the pipeline, and they were hoping for something smaller. And they didn't get that either. And the fact that that administration did not conclude our environmental clearance should put that issue to rest. We did not pay anything to anybody. If you would have paid the, you call it the seven figures, do you think you would have gotten environmental clearance before the general election? Well, I understood it to be a quid pro quo. 
Gag has been put on notice that he will need to return to answer more questions.